Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and here with the first episode of Lion Reviews. Uh, in this little series sort of thing, I'm going to be going through a load of TV shows, series, things like that and putting forward my opinion, letting you guys know what I think. Maybe you see something on the list that you've not seen before and you want a little review before you watch it or this is something that you've seen and you want to know other people's opinions on it. That's what I'm here to give you really. So for the first episode of this, I'm going to be going over a film called Deadly Detention. Now before I start talking about what I think about the film, uh, let's run through a basic plot and a little bit behind it. This film was written by Alison Spock McNeely and Cassie Tabuno. It was directed by Blair Hayes and it stars Gillian Vigman, Alex Funka, Henry Zaga, Sarah Davenport, Coy Stewart and Jennifer Robin Jacobs. So a basic plot of the film is five teenagers are given detention, but when the school is infested by possums, the detention is moved over to a prison. I know, prison, why? Well, it's a former prison. Um, and detention goes like normal detention does. Kids, you know, take the piss and shit. Uh, until the principal is murdered, then the teenagers basically have to try to keep themselves alive while trying to find a way out. Now I think the best place to start with this is going to be the casting. The acting in this was just shite. From basically all angles, the only good person in this was Gillian Vigman. Like, her acting skills actually made it feel like she actually gave a shit in this. I know that the film's meant to be a comedy horror and shit's meant to be loose, but the acting was literally just atrocious. The lines weren't believable and they, the actors themselves weren't really putting anything in behind the lines. Everything just felt forced and it felt like it was falling apart. The plot itself, really, why would you get moved to, you know, a former prison? I swear to God, if I was in school and I got put in detention and I got told I had to date at a former prison, I'd be telling them to get fucked. I'm pretty sure it's against your rights as a pupil to have to date your detention in a fucking prison. Even if it isn't an active running prison, it'd be against it. So as soon as you as soon as you hear you're going to this place or as soon as you show up to this place, you'd be like, nah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. So even the beginning plot of the film isn't fucking believable at all. Again, I know it's comedy horror, but you want to keep it at least semi-believable. It also relied overly on over-predictability. The killer themselves, predictable. The, each of the death scenes, it was predictable who was going to die. And for some of it, it was predictable how they were going to die. It just got very, very boring. Because you want that little bit of flavour, you want a little bit of surprise. Like, say, say somebody's coming at you with a chainsaw. This isn't in the film, but I'm saying, say someone's coming at you with a chainsaw. Do you want that death to just be straight up chainsaw? No, sometimes you want a little bit of flavour. Like, maybe they end it by, I don't know, they lose the chainsaw. And somehow they end up getting their face pushed into the chainsaw. I don't know. Mixes it up a little. This didn't have any of that, really. I will give them props on the location. It looked like it was actually a former prison. Uh, I'd have to do a little bit, more, a little bit more research to actually find out if it was an actual former prison. But, aye, the location itself was actually really good. Like, they got the set right. Truth is, though, the set and that one good actor are the only good saving graces in this film. The music, the music is absolutely horrendous. They use absolutely over-the-top fucking dramatic music in scenes where there's nothing even going on. Like, I know you want to build tension, but there's other ways to do it rather than putting these, like, dun, 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 dun. In scenes where people are just walking. Like, what's the point? Going back to the fact that this is a comedy horror, the biggest issue with the comedy in this is it always fell flat. I barely even got a chuckle out of one or two of the jokes and the others got nothing out of me. I just kind of felt annoyed that it was trying to be funny and just epically failing. Also, the comedy didn't really see like seemed like it knew which direction it was going if it was going just to be a comedy horror or trying to spoof other things it just felt like it was all jumbled and they were trying everything that they could different ways in this Ugh. if you're going to go with that at least try to get a structure to it there was no structure to the comedy there was no structure to the plot everything in this just felt like a bundled mess 
and it was ridiculous. One of the scenes I really like to talk about where you can see the editing even going wrong, uh, there's a scene where they're going down, the going down the hall and they're trying different doors and they used jump cuts in this scene. Not even jump cuts well, these jump cuts were literally just there. In the most ridiculous of place. The scene didn't need the jump cuts, the jump cuts did nothing for the scene. They didn't speed the scene up, they didn't add any extra anything to it. So why use jump cuts when they're absolutely not needed? I realise I use jump cuts a lot, but for me it's to cut out the empty space. To cut out the, the times when I'm not talking or the times when I mess up. With a film, if a scene's messed up, you reshoot that full scene. Like, you cut out, you cut out everything and you reshoot the scene. Or else, if you have to edit it together, edit it together well. The jump cuts, oh, I, I, I was pissed off at this point. Uh, I'm going to put a time in the description for you to jump ahead to it. If you don't want this part spoiled, I'm going to spoil a little bit of the end in here. So I'll give you a quick second here to actually move ahead if you need to. Right, there we go. This was a really, really big, big part of it. During the film, I wanted to turn it off halfway through, but I wanted to do this review, so I figured, do you know what, I'll, I'm going to stick with it till the end so that I can actually review the film. Once we go to the end, we find out that no one's dead. That just ripped it all away from me. Like, any respect that I had for this film, and I had very, very little, was fucking gone at this point. At least if you're going to make a crappy horror film, have the people actually die. No, at the end they reveal that they're being taken to the fucking uh, ER. So to sum this up, basically, overuse of dramatic music when definitely not needed, flat comedy, bad acting. So, so bad. When it comes to rating the films, I kind of want to put my own little spin on it. So the rating for this film is going to be absolute dog wank because that's what I had in my head the whole time while watching it. Wow, this is absolute fucking dog wank. I would not wish my worst enemy to fucking watch this film. Obviously, this was just my first review. I want to do a lot more. I've got a list on my phone currently of things that I've watched that I would love to review. But if you guys know any, let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know, if you've seen this film, let me know if you like it. Like, I thought it was absolutely fucking horrendous. No redeemable qualities in it. So with that being said, I sent it to you guys to another detention next week. Where you will join me for yet another review. Catch you in the next one.